Hi guys, this is going to be a really quick tutorial on how I make 3D printed jigs for chassis tubes um, just to allow the welders to kind of weld uh, particularly difficult joints such as this one down here a little easier. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, set my working directory because I'm well behaved and I'm going to put it in the chassis folder. Excellent. Um, next thing I'm going to do is just take a section view across the central plane just to make it a little clear for, clearer for us what we're trying to do. Then I'll create the dummy part for the chassis jig. Chassis jig 1 and we're making it out of probably pet G. Um, I made it and it's called this is chassis jig 1. Excellent. All right, so once that's done, I'm just going to save that in this folder and close it. And then I'll assemble that empty piece into this assembly uh, in the default location. Done, all right. So the next step, I'm going to activate this part. Um, and you can kind of see the governing um, curves that dictate these chassis, these chassis tubes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on, turn on points to see how these uh, curves are generated here. Um, I'm going to make a plane that runs through this point here um, and I'll kind of make it run along these three chassis tubes here um, to sort of form that triangle basis there. So I've added that plane. I'll then select that plane again to extrude off of it. Um, I will reference that point and turn them off. Then I'm going to make the inner diameter of this sort of donut shape. Um, we're making it a donut shape such that the welders can still get the torches into the joints to access the um, access the weldable sections. So I'm going to give it an, an internal diameter of 120 and I'll make it maybe 30 millimeters thick. Wonderful. All right. So we've got that extrude there. All we need to do is just make sure that it's covering all of these chassis tubes um, with enough meat on it for the 3D print to remain stable. So I don't know, somewhere about there should be fine. Then on the other side, I'll do the same thing. Um, so once again, I've just got to make sure that all of these tubes become fully encapsulated by this piece, just with enough, a little bit of meat left over. All right, so that's our base piece there. Wonderful. Scroll back up to the top. So the next thing we need to do is cut out the tube shapes from this piece. I'll do that by going into component, component operations, Boolean operations, and I want to cut I want to cut material out of this piece and the governing bodies for that are going to be these tubes. I'm holding down control to select all of them at once and I'll go okay. It does the magic for me, middle click out of that. And then if I open up this piece you can see that it's made those cuts in there. But as those members are all tubes it's left these central parts in there. So to get rid of those I want to split body I'll select volume and then just click on each of these little cylinders. Once again, just holding control to select all of them at once. Fantastic. They're now regarded as different bodies and I can remove that secondary body um, and we're left with um, empty holes there. All right, at this point, I think that it's probably best that we uh, enlarge some of these holes. At the moment, they're the exact size as the chassis members in CAD. Um, in reality, that's probably not the best idea. The 3D printer may just have like a little bit of a, a loose clearance on that, so it may not end up fitting. So in order to do that, um, the easiest way I imagine is probably just to do an extrude for each of these. Um, I'll show you how to do it on one, and then you guys can repeat it as many times as necessary. So I'm going to make a plane that is normal to one of my defining axes here. Um, and I'll say that it also has to go through uh, any, any arbitrary point, doesn't really matter. Um, from that plane, I'll make an extrude. Um, I'll hide these axes. And I want to offset from this chain here. Yes, I want to convert it to a loop. 
I'll offset it by maybe 0.5 of a mil. So in total, this will be one millimeter larger than the chassis members in theory. Okay, so I've made that sketch. I'll now extrude that. I want to remove material. I'll say remove material up until this face and just to make sure that it actually gets um, the other direction as well. I'll go options side to, to that one there. Beautiful. So now if I measure that diameter, that's 26.4, whereas the other ones are 25.4. So you can do that for all the other ones and I would recommend testing this to actually see what sort of fitment works best. All right, now the next step is to cut this body such that we can slide on both halves around the chassis tubes. This is a more challenging process than I originally thought. The uh, most reliable way that I've found to try and achieve this um, It'll use these data maxis here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is going around this entire circle, I'll select a pair of data maxis at a time and I'll make a plane from those. So I'll select those two to start with and I'll repeat that all the way around um, using all five pairs. Beautiful. All right, we've got those five obscure uh, datum planes now. Um, I don't think it's very helpful for me to turn them on to show you what we've done, but I promise you we've done something helpful. Um, so with those, I'll turn all of that garbage off now. With those, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the split body command again, but instead of using the volume tab, I'll try with the splitting object. Um, I wanna split this body and I will use the first datum plane that we generated there. So this plane basically makes a split that goes halfway between each of these uh, chassis member cutouts. Um, this is going to look fairly complicated, but we can kind of bring it all together at the end and it's not too bad. So I'll repeat that process um, for each of the five planes here, um, being careful about which body I want to cut with that. Um, so I'm just going to have a look at what this gives me each time I make this cut. So from the looks of it, this plane here is going to give us the halfway points between these two members. If I try to cut that one there, it doesn't give me anything useful. So I'm going to select that body there, which provides a cut halfway along there. Fantastic. And like I said, I'm just going to repeat that for all of these datum planes. Um, being careful about which body I'm cutting. So, in terms of what is most useful here, it seems pretty logical that it'll be that large one. Fantastic. Yep, that seems logical. Right, and that's doing a, a very similar cut to before. Okay, so we've made all of those cuts and that's all well and good, but it probably just looks like a garbled mess at the moment and I can understand that. So what we do now is we can examine each of these bodies one by one and see just what they look like. So if I hide all of these bar one, probably that chunky bottom one, so this is what one of our pieces looks like. So what we're trying to achieve is making sure that none of these arcs extend beyond 180 degrees. Because if that's the case, they won't be able to slide over the chassis members. So all of these look good. That one's probably a little close, but they all look fine. The caveat here is members, uh, sorry, cutouts like this that are clearly less than 180 degrees mean that the sister component will have um, a sharper corner there. So I'll need to do something to address that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to round off all of these edges here, um, in particular, these ones down here. This seems like it's quite close to approaching 180 degrees of arc length. So that could come quite close to interfering with the chassis member such that it won't slide on. So I'll just add a round for all of these members. 
two or three mils should probably be fine. But once again, I um, definitely advise that you test these pieces on the chassis before you give them to machinists. I might make that three mil. Why not? Let's get loose. All right, beautiful. So that's one piece there. So what I'm now gonna do is I will show the rest of those bodies and I will use the remove body tool again and I'll select all five of those bodies Ooh, that we don't want. Terrific. So now we just have that one body in its own. Um, I will save that as a copy and I will go chassis jig 1A. Save that as a part file. Uh, yes, I'll overwrite that. All right, now I'm going to suppress that remove body. And instead, I'm going to remove the body that we just utilized. And so this is the sister part. So ignore all of these messy lines, so we can fix that up later. But what I'm looking at is all of these arcs, and you can see that some of them extend a little beyond 180 degrees, and it's just because of the geometry of the chassis tubes. So once again, I'm going to round off all of these edges. Um, I'm thinking that for the ones that extend beyond 180 degrees, I might include them as a separate round and extend them out just a little larger. Um, maybe even larger than that. Let's go nine. That's a good number. Done. All right. So then we've kind of guaranteed that there'll be open clearance there and we won't have trouble with um, interference on the chassis tubes. I'll then just do the small rounds on all of these ones. Set that to three, I believe it was. Terrific. Okay, so that should give us enough clearance around all the chassis tubes. It's, you know, you can easily alter it if not. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll save as a copy again, this time as a shrink wrap. So that means that all of these components will get saved under one body instead of, you know, as a split part. Uh, so we'll go 1B. Um, I'll go emerged solid and the rest of that is fine. Terrific. Okay, so we now have our two components. If I go back to the chassis and I pretend that that dummy jig was never there, um, I'll assemble chassis jig 1A somewhere around there. And I'm just gonna constrain it using these two members here. Done, so that's placed on there. And then I'll do the same for 1B. Once again, just grabbing those chassis members as references. All right, so you can see that that snaps on there. Um, we've got various clearances around these tubes. Once again, I would really recommend kind of test fitting these before you give them to the machinists on an old version, um, like an old chassis, um, just to make sure that the way you're doing it is gonna work. Um, so that in essence is finished. The only things that I would add are maybe through holes so that you can bolt this all together. Um, a consideration that you may wanna make is for this piece, for example, um, I could extrude, um, Let's see where these planes are. All right, I'll, I'll extrude off of that front plane. It's fairly arbitrary, but there's quite a lot of material here that we potentially don't need. Um, so if I wanted to reduce the amount of filament that I'm using, reduce 3D print time, um, I can just extrude away this large section, punch through all that. Uh, and that will still be 3D printable because it has a flat base and there's no substantial overhangs here. Um, the only downside of doing this is when you go to make bolt holes, um, you'll need to make sure that you include a, a bit of a recess in there so that you can have a, um, a flush mate between the two. Otherwise, um, that should be all you need to recreate this and do it on whatever nodes you need. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much for your time, guys.